Hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here. Now then, whenever we last left off, the Marine, he had just handed out these compasses, as you can call them, that will lead everyone to the beacon. He has instructed everyone that he will activate the beacon once he gets there. Once that has occurred, they may begin. Now, I suggest you travel in teams. Or you can travel alone. However, just know, three weeks is a long time to be alone. If you do travel by yourself, you also have to watch your own back. And you may encounter things that may be beyond even you. Now then, as the Marine would turn around and walk back onto the ship, saying that this task will be hard. But it is not impossible. Those of you who think it is are not determined. Now, the Marine would then head over to the top of the mountain. He would be gone for five minutes before everyone realizes that the beacons are active. And they would begin running that way. Now, Deku, Karashima, and Momo, they are all on team. Deku can see everyone around him. They are all just frantically grabbing onto someone's shoulder. Or at least outstretching their hands to at least show them that they're with them. Any type of signal someone can give, they're giving it. He can see it all around him. Now, they would make their way into the forest. As Deku begins to try and think. If there's some way that they can get there fast, he needs to find out what it is now. But this is going to be difficult. Exactly what can we do? What can we use? Now. Deku, he be, would be thinking on this. As we'll cut to two to three days later. They are running through a different area. This seems to be a bit different. It's close by the forest, but it seems like the atmosphere has somewhat changed. It's gotten hot and dry. This is a desert. So, this will be their biggest challenge. Deku, he begins to try and think about different things to do. As he just stops for a second. He stops for a second to catch his breath, saying that they need to recover. Now, they would stop. Momo asking Deku exactly if he has a plan yet. To which he would say that he's had many, many in his head. But we need something. We need something big enough. Now, this is when Deku, he would look back into the forest, seeing one of these creatures he was hunting before. Before their hunt was interrupted by this giant fur creature. He thinks that if they can get one of those, they can probably get through there faster. Their top speed is faster than our running speed. Hmm. As Deku would walk over. He would bend down and he would begin grabbing and actually pulling out some of the vines. Grabbing them and actually putting them together. Wrapping them around and making sure that he can create something tight and, well, sturdy enough. They'd be watching him do this. As Deku, he would wrap it around his hands and finally just yank on it as hard as possible. Whenever it does not snap, this is whenever Deku thinks that it should work. As he just points over to the creature, saying that if this plan works, then they should have a good time. It'll also enable us to rest, so once we get across, we can let it go. You sure about that? Yes. As Deku, he would start climbing a tree. As he does so, he holds this, well, essential rope in his hand. As he gets directly over this beast. As soon as that happens, he begins to jump down. 
He would land on its back as he would immediately bring his hands forward and pull them backwards, putting this into its mouth. As the thing starts to flail around angrily and try and get Deku off its back. Deku basically just being able to hold on for dear life and be able to stay up. After a couple minutes, the beast would have calmed down. Deku actually somewhat getting its trust. Now, this is whenever Momo and Kirishima, these two would hop on. Deku, he sees that this thing, it should not have any trouble. As he just kicks to its side and tells it to move forward. It does not listen. Until Kirishima does one simple thing. She hardens her hand and smacks the side of the beast. As it would immediately jerk forward, almost taking them off. As it begins to move and actually glide through the sand. This is insane. This creature should be able to get them across in no time. As they would spend the next couple hours actually on this thing's back. Gliding across the desert. Now. With that, they would have eventually gotten across after a day and a half. As Deku can clearly tell this creature is exhausted. Momo and Kirishima, they would hop off, hop off the creature. Deku pulling the vine out of its mouth. And stepping off of it. The creature would immediately go to scurry away. And it would turn to see that the, these three, well, things aren't chasing it. So clearly they don't want it. As it would turn again running. Or well, sliding through the sand. As these three would turn, Deku would start running. As he drops the vine. Now, what's happening? The Space Marines, they be checking on everyone they can to see who is where. They find that other kids, they've had better ideas. The young Midoriya, as they call him, he was actually very tactical with that. But his plan would be a second to another person's. They had an idea to create something that was able to actually get them airborne. But it requires them to use their quirk. Along with it not being very stable. So, Deku. He is seen as someone who's at least fairly skilled. The boy clearly pays attention in survival training. Not even that, he seemed to have taken a bit of a step further. So, exactly who will come out on top? Deku, Momo, and Kirishima, they would continue as they would start scaling a mountain. They have to get through this mountain, then through many others, along with actually probably swimming across the ocean. Or at least what seems to be a large body of water. Now, whenever they do get up to the mountain, they get to its peak. Daku, he is tired, and he is somewhat exhausted. They've been awake for a while. Daku was able to get some rest whenever they, well, stopped. But ever since he was mating that creature, Momo and Kirishima were the only ones to be able to sleep on it. Deku was able, able to get in at least an hour or two of sleep, but that was not enough. Clearly his body needs more. So, Deku would say that they can rest at the top of this mountain, then figure out what to do tomorrow. We could look around for stuff to create a raft, or probably just swim across. Be your best bet. As Deku would just lay down in the grass. For a second he thinks it might be poisonous. But he would just look at the leaves. Seeing that they're fine. 
If anything, the leaves are just a bit thicker than normal, so it should be okay. As Deku would fall asleep. Momo would take first watch, and Kirishima would also get some sleep. A couple hours later, Deku would wake up. To see that Momo is sleeping in Kirishima, she is awake, asking exactly what's been going on. Kirishima just explains that they were able to come up with an idea. Hmm? Exactly what was it? Well, there's the raft, there's crazy idea number one, then crazy idea number two. Okay, what's crazy idea number one? Well, you know how you wrapped the vine in that thing's mouth earlier? Yeah. Well, this idea somewhat needs that. But we also need a needle. Which, as she would hold up in her hand, saying Momo provided. These are from Earth, right? Yeah. They're made a certain way. I don't, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, we also need very, very thick cloth and or fibers. We can create this thing called a, well, flight suit or wingsuit. If we can create sturdy enough ones, we should be able to glide or at least fly far enough. That's your idea? That's your plan? Well, it's the best I've got right now. Besides, look. As she would just point out towards toward the water. Deku, he'd be confused by what he's seeing. He sees a campfire. But that's not right, can it? No, it is. As she would just say that there are people across. Clearly, this thing isn't endless. It's just, we couldn't see it before. It's... The sun's going to be up soon. If we're able to at least make it to there, or farther, then we can at least show that we're been, we've been listening. And that we are good candidates. Alright, well, as Deku would immediately just get up, almost falling for a second, saying that they need to hurry. As they would get to work, Deku would begin pulling out this thick fiber or thick grass that he was laying in, and start handing it over to Kirishima, as she would try drying it out in their campfire. While that's happening, Momo would wake up, and she would see what's going on. As she sees Deku pulling out these weird plants and just moving it around in his finger until he's able to pull out threads of it, or at least just really thin pieces. It's like a, well, not even a cloth really, it's more of a fiber, and or a wire. So, this is when Rodeku, he would immediately begin by sewing pieces together along with Karashima and Momo once she understands what's going on. Actually helping create certain pieces that they will need. Basically a long sleeve shirt and a long sleeve well, long sleeve pants that they can sew everything to and then sew shut to complete the suit. After about two to three hours and a lot of trouble they would complete both of them, or well, all three with a lot, all three of them. Deku, he would say that that was good, but as he just looks down at something, he still needs a large piece, and most of the grass is gone. Momo would have done Deku a favor, holding out her hands and creating a large piece of cloth that Deku would stitch over this area, and really, really sew it in there, as to make sure that this will not fall apart. 
Deku would then walk over to the cliff's edge. And he's a bit nervous. If this fails, then he's going to die. But if this doesn't, they're going to win. Or at least get there. The task isn't impossible, as Deku would just say. Before, he would take a leap of faith. He would run forward and immediately just throw his hands outwards and go gliding. As the two would watch him fall. He would then soar back upwards as he carries himself on the air currents. He just begins to scream. He is excited. This worked. They're going to make it after all. As Momo and Karashima would take their own jumps. Being successful. Now, Deku, he would tell them that, well, he'd basically be shouting this as loud as he can, but that they need to be careful. If they can keep upwards on the current, then that means that they'll be able to stay up above it. When it stops, we should be able to use our momentum to glide. As they would continue. They would be able to glide over this large body of water, and actually over the mountain above it. As many different people see these giant creatures, essentially just soaring. No. Deku, he feels that the air has gotten stale, and is actually getting colder. As they would finally, finally start getting into the area that they need to. Now. For the next couple hours, they would be gliding and actually soaring at high speeds. They would be on the air currents. Since the mountain is considered to be the largest, there's so much wind blowing in this direction that they've gotten very high off the ground. They are around 13,000 to 14,000 feet. Which, for those of you who do not know, is 2.5 miles straight up into the air. Actually, 13,000 feet is 2.5 miles. 14 is above that. Now, this is where Deku, he's trying to find out exactly where they are. With how much snow and wind is blowing in his face, it's getting hard to tell what's going on. As Deku, he would just move his hands upwards, being able to actually slow himself down and move upward. As the two would follow him. They begin to somewhat soar upwards into the air and over this mountain. As they would actually stop and take a breather. Landing was quite difficult, however. But not impossible. They were able to slow themselves down enough to where they can actually just hold their hands outwards and basically land onto the ground. But you would probably go rolling if you do this wrong. So, they would need to be careful. Now. Whenever they do that, they would somewhat try to think of another thing to do. If this, if the wingsuits get damaged, then this will be the end of their journey. So, they would take a break for about an hour to let their bodies somewhat rest. Since they would constantly have to redirect exactly how they're moving in the air. So... After that happens, they would jump off again, and go soaring. As they would finally arrive at the base of the mountain. Whenever they arrive, they would have immediately gotten to work by taking off the suits. However, Deku's team is not the only one there. Deku and everyone would have arrived to see another set of scouts. The scouts somewhat being in shock. Because whenever they are looking at the distance, they see these birds. Which would have gotten bigger until Deku, he would have come in, rolling and actually landing onto the ground. Hitting it hard, but at least being able to land. As they would have been in shock to see two more people do this. Deku immediately getting up and beginning to rip away the suit. As he would have started running. The two doing the exact same, as the two teams would basically be running for the mountain, going up as high as possible and actually climbing it. 
This is whenever they come to a portion where they have to free climb. If you guys do not understand what free climbing is, it is basically climbing without a tether. It's considered the most dangerous because if you do not make a jump or you fall, there is nothing there to be, well, there's no safety measures. If you fall, you will get hurt or probably die. Now, Deku and everyone, they are doing this. Deku, he's actually able to do this because of his experience. And this being one of the things that he's most skilled in. One of them. He has yet to master free climbing, but he will get to it at some point. Now, Karashima, she's actually hardening her hands as much as possible. Focus focusing on them and her feet, as she's able to just bury her hands in the mountain and just climb upwards. Deku and Momo following and actually somewhat, at some points, diverging from the path she's making. If they can't get up a certain way, they'll grab into one of the holes she has made. As they are a thousand feet above sea level. And they're still climbing upwards. Deku, he would come to a point where he can't get upwards anymore in his spot. Karashima can't either. They're basically just hanging on the side of this cliff. Since getting up it is going to be impossible. Until Deku would have seen a hole. Which he would think that if the odds are against him, he can grab that. But since last time, he has to keep his option open. Karashima is just asking what should they do now. As he would just say that he needs a minute. He would look to his right to see that there is a... Well, there seems to be a rock hanging down, and there may be a piece Deku can grab onto. So, if this works, then he's going to need to do some serious praying. As Karashima would watch Deku somewhat muttering under his breath. However, she doesn't find this odd. She actually does hear some part of a prayer. As she would see Deku immediately just jump outwards, throwing himself to the right as he would have thrown his hands outwards and grab onto something, as his body would begin to swing. Everyone underneath Deku saw him do that. And they would have watched as Deku, he begins to try and get his right arm steady, being able to hold onto this and actually pull himself upwards, beginning to climb more. Karashima being in complete shock. She didn't expect Deku to do that, but she's got to do it too. If that's the way he's going, then we need to stick together. As she would harden her right hand as much as possible. Throwing herself in that direction, immediately smashing and stabbing into the wall with it. As she would have grabbed whatever she can in there and begin to climb upwards more. Momo, however, she's actually created climbing gear. She created a pickaxe that she can use to go upwards and smash into the, into the rocks with. And get a grip. She begins to follow them as they would make their way upwards. For two to three days, they would continue climbing in straight up and or 45 degree angles. Anything possible, any possible angle you can imagine, between 45 and 90. As a full week would pass since they began their training they would finally make it to the top. Deku, he is actually a bit tired. So is everyone. As they would somewhat set up a bit of a camp. Basically just resting by the cliffside. Deku would just think one thing. If he had his camera right now, oh boy. This would be amazing. Hmm. Momo doing one simple thing. She would create a small camera, taking an actual picture of this view, as she begins to do so for many other things. As Karashima would begin asking questions about that, she would just turn as a flash would go off in Karashima's face, her someone getting annoyed, saying that that was uncalled for. The two actually would begin to laugh, as Momo would do one thing. She actually does stand right next to these two as they all have a group photo. Them all somewhat laughing. 
as the other team would have made it up. And they would be exhausted too. Deku actually helping, or holding out his hand for one person. Asking if the guy's okay. Huh. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Anyways. Glad you finally made it. Yeah. Question. How'd you know about the snake? The what? Oh, figures. The thing you avoided. I was attacked back when we were training. Oh. Neat. Anyways. I lost a friend because of that. Sorry about that. But, well, you know how it goes. Deku helping this guy to his feet. Then walking back over. Picking up his gear saying that they're leaving now. Anyways. Hopefully I can see on the ship. As they would continue walking. For the next week, they would have climbed the entire mountain. Eventually getting to the top. As they are the second team to arrive. The first team arrived because some guy decided that since he can use his fire cork, he can, well, use that in conjunction with another girl's cork. Along with them creating a basket and a air, well, a balloon. They basically made a hot air balloon. And they actually had to make part of it a bit more stable, since it would put stress on a girl's cork to do this for very long. They had to use the help of a girl called Yuraka, whose cork was zero gravity. Now then, Deku and everyone else, they would have been waiting for this entire week, using their rations that they got to keep themselves alive, as eventually, more and more teams would arrive, and they would be picked up and taken back to their planets, or at least their planet they call home for right now. Now then, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video, and well... I'm going to have to go to work a bit early, so I do not think there will be time for another upload, so I am sorry about that. Anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video and have an amazing day. This is Kira Show, signing off.